Hello dungeon dwellers and welcome back to some more Legend of Keepers where we are moving into the second year of the whole playthrough here and I, as far as I've been aware at least by one of our comments it, it said that the, the game takes a, a place over a course of two years I, I didn't really know whether it was one or two or sorry two or three uh, from my own experiences because you kind of lose track, but I suppose we, we have one more uh, year, that means 52 weeks, and then we will have the final boss fight, and then and then it will be over. You get like a score and an XP based on your performance. So, uh, we had the boss fight in the previous episode, I don't really remember where we left off. Let's see, we are moving into we could do the workout, an event, or the therapist. Therapist is a morale review done by a specialist giving motivation to everyone, which is not usually something I want to do, but maybe we could do right now. I think the workout though is so good to get done. We have a lot of blood. We don't have a lot of tears, which is kind of bad. And the event, maybe we should do the event. The event has a chance of getting us more money. We will be able to work out more later. Uh, but a little bit of a chance to get some tears in between might be worth going for. So I think the event the event uh, is what I'm going to be doing here. And, oh, oh, we have a chance at a boss monster, which is a great thing to do or get. Uh, and he's even level 2, but we didn't have the money. So this is part of the reason why you often want to have a little bit of money in your storage when you before you start doing events. Uh, it is what it is. The Orc Sorcerer here, mm, he's actually really good as far as I recall. He, when he is in the fight, uh, he, his special, he has a passive, which is that when the guys, uh, the other monsters in the fight dies, they will be reanimated as skeletons, which is just a great passive ability. Uh, uh, so you got, you, the main, the main thing becomes a, 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 a fight to keep him uh, as the last guy who dies. Um, but in general, he's just really good. And we can't have him, unfortunate. Then we have the trainer, merchant, and event. We don't have the money really to, to dive into any of the other two things here, so it will be an event again. We get another chance at a monster. A skeleton dog for 100 gold, which is actually kind of nice. The skeleton dog is pretty good. Uh, and so here's a wish for me that I could see the stats of the monsters. But now I know most of the monsters, so uh, I, I know what the skeleton does. But why, why am I not allowed to see the stats of him here? Just a minor grievance. Let's have a look at him. He is here. He His passive is that he all other monsters in the group starts with Enraged 2. And that's just a, a passive thing. I love passive effects, so this is great monsters. He applies bleeding, and there's also a morale effect in monster but he's got both a single target attack and an area attack so he's a great two different damage types and his buff just a great monster all around and he combos with skeleton uh, stuff if you have any of that but we've said no to the skeleton combo we get a chance to the therapist again or another event i'm gonna go for the event once more more time and here we have the chance to get the tears so this was this was the perfect way to do it then the alchemist allows us to turn blood into tears or tears into blood or either of them into gold but i don't have enough of them to want to turn it into gold and the, the ratio that we have of them right now is just fine so i'm just going to do yet another event you end up doing a lot of the events in general what do we have here some of your player, uh, started, employees have started a strike they are asking for a risk premium and are threatening to carry on for three weeks if they don't get what they want which means that we can't pay it so these guys will be out of commission for three weeks Nothing I can really do about it. And then we move into a fight. So that's unfortunate. They are out of the game. But we got our other guys who were waiting or had something to do. They're back at least. So we can do a full monster set. We are going to be fighting in not the ice caverns. Which is important. Because of course we are doing the veterans. We still have poison at the start of the dungeon. Look at that. For 22 more weeks. It's getting these passives are just great and they they last for a really long time so yeah this is just great it's what five f 15 then 10 then 5 so 30 damage still to all the heroes at the start of the dungeon but modified by nature resistance of course which can be positive or negative and we have the lure now which is great all right 
let me try to build some good rooms for us today. Let's see, we can do the skeleton. I like having the skeleton soldier in the first room, because in the first room we really want to try to stay alive long enough to do some proper damage to one of the heroes. That's always the goal. And we can do full on bleed build with these two together. Do we have more bleed? Yes, we do in the satyr. And now we have a monster that is faster than the satyr. So we can better apply, like we can apply something with the hound, skeleton dog, and then. Yeah, his front ability is the one that spreads the stacks to all other heroes. So this is kind of perfect. Those two in combination are pretty good. So this is a nice, uh, let's see, bleed here, and then you, and oh, we've got bleed and the gargoyle too. All right, and then they also combo into air, these two together. Maybe the satyr isn't needed in this room then. I would love to move my fire room to the second room. So now we have fire and ice in here and we can go full on ice and full on fire. Now we can choose between them. The other thing to be said is that I could move Malthus out to get him recharged a bit, which may be better. But at the very least we want to make sure we do that before the final boss fight so that as many of our good guys are fully rested for that because we have that troll ale that deals more damage if they are of maximum motivation. Yes. We have bleed build in the first room. We also have air combo in the first room. Great. We could throw in some more nature together with the satyr. This is looking like a pretty good room at that point. Except the satyr isn't great at the start. But you know what? Since we have poison applied at the start, the satyr becomes a little bit better. Yes. Very good. Mm hmm. I think this is a nice setup. Since we already have bleed build without the gargoyle in here, we might want to rest the gargoyle. And then she's at full motivation, this lady here. Let's just throw her in. She's also a poison build. So now we have poison, poison, poison build. Bleed, bleed, and bleed, bleed, and air. Air, air. No, we dropped the other air uh, monster, the gargoyle. Okay. But still, this is a pretty decent room. And then we have full on ice or full on fire here. I'm tempted. I am tempted to move out Malthus and then do this instead. Get you move you off the poison damage over here. Maybe this is the better setup. Because then we rest Malthus specifically. And I feel like we have a pretty decent setup here, but now we're moving into year two and heroes get a little bit of a power spike, at least in my experience when you move into the second year. So this could be, if I if I don't play to my, my full strength, we could start to see defeats uh, and you only get one. So uh, when you, I, I did talk a bit about that in my stream when I was playing before I started recording, I was safe scumming. You can safe scum pretty effectively in this game. At the end of a, a hero invasion, if, uh, if you don't like what happened, when they are about to kill your master or your master is about to kill the heroes, you can exit the game, just close down the game and you start it back up. It, it, it will be at the start of the invasion. You can do the whole thing over again. So I did that a lot when I was practicing. Of course, we are not doing that here. We are effectively, there's no permadeath mode, but effectively we are playing with permadeath. So I gotta be, there's no like do over here and I gotta really think if we wanna, I think we can do it. I've, I have a good feeling about our current run here. And I feel safe, so that's probably the reason why we are gonna die. Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. I don't do the darkest dungeon. The marketing team but, oh. has decided to add a resting area to our dungeons. It seemed essential to find a solution to attract seasoned adventurers more efficiently than the competition. Ah, I thought I had more time to do uh, pour my coffee here, but hold on. <laughs> uh, so let me talk about that specifically. Also makes the dungeon, of course, 
harder for me. But we there's two new rooms added, which is more important, right? We have the we had a new room or new 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 thing unlocked for ourselves, which is this new spell room. You can see it's kind of the same icon as the old spell room, but this is like a special super spell that the enchantress gets. The slave holder does not get this room. He gets like a, a mini boss monster instead. So this is a super powerful spell room that we have selected a spell for. I went over that in the previous episode. And then the heroes also get a, a room which can be devastating. Or it can be absolutely useless for them, for them in the, which is, this is, is in this case, because this one gives the heroes all 30% of all their um, the maximum morale back, which is great. If they are uh, up against a, uh, a master that is using a lot of morale damage, which we are doing nothing of. Later, you might imagine that there are some rooms that heal the adventurers, and my oh my, that is so bad for us when that comes around. And it will, they will roll that room every once in a while. So, <clears throat> this is lucky for us, and that means we could probably make it through this. And then there's one room that removes two stacks of penalties from all heroes, or like two penalty stacks, I should say. Uh, no, two entire penalties. That's the like the clear. Even if the, 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 they take away the two penalties with the highest amount of stacks, that's how it goes with that room for from every hero. So yeah. All right. Let me plan out this one here. The monster room comes relatively late here, so we won't have the initial. We will have the initial poison damage on everyone, except oh, we sh I should go through the heroes. It's been a few days since I recorded, so let me go over this again. Uh, this guy is poison immune. She's a shaman with the heal, so they have a healing here of 50% after one once per, once per dungeon. After a fight, they will heal one hero of its maximum life, 50% of its maximum life. Okay, and then she does area fire damage with burn application. Okay, nasty. Then the rogue does area nature damage and applies poison to the hero with the or the monster with the highest life at the start of each fight. An initial duration of a penalty is uh, received decreased by one turn. This is a deceptively nasty penalty uh, uh, passive, especially for, because I, in my builds, often work in a lot of penalty application. This one, um, I don't. The thing is, I also forget about it since because it seems so small. But it, it it's I think it's deceptively good. And it works against every kind of penalty, right? So, pretty good for them. And then they have the monk, who uh, does ice damage and f applies frostbite. And also, if the opponent, my his his opponent is below fifty percent health, he applies frostbite to everyone. Ah, okay. So that's the only case where he applies frostbite. Then he can remove a the most the penalty with the most stacks applied from 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 all heroes at the start of his turn once. And then he. This guy has a passive that gains him a random bonus at the start of the turn if he is not currently benefiting from any bonus. Alright. So, no poison on you. This guy has insanely high nature resistance, and this uh, guy has nature resistance. So the initial poison damage where we are gonna get is gonna be pretty much nullified. Then, let me see. With traps, we have the mortar, which is once again nullified by having a fire-resistant hero at the back line. So mortar once again completely useless. None of them dodge a trap though. If we want to use the lure, we have to use it in this room specifically because in the we can't use the lure in the second room because it applies to the next trap and there's only two traps. So, not mortar. Could do the lure in order to double a trap later. Or we could do the rallying horn here and then ice in the next one. Let's see, ice resistance is high, medium, and low. Okay. Uh, poison doesn't work at all. Well, it does on 75% of this guy, but nothing else. All right. Cursed prism is just elemental weakness across the board. I think either the cursed prism or the rallying horn is the better one here. Or you can you can lure and then double the rallying horn uh, in in the next room for for double uh, enraged application in the, the second master room, which is also a strategy. But let's place down the elemental weakness initially, and then we'll come back to that trap room if we feel like we need it. So we had nature 
nature combo, but we've decided nature is not going to be it. So it's probably going to be bleed build, and I'm just going to build this and see. say this is probably what we want. Uh, how about air? Oh, air is pretty low. And they have an element, so the combo is this guy has air. The Satyr does nature damage, but really it's not about his damage. It's about his ability, first of all, to apply elemental resistance and then also spread stacks of penalties around and we can spread the, the poison to every, oh, sorry, the, the, the bleed that we are doing to everyone. The two that deal bleed damage are also dealing physical damage to the front and we have a physically weak uh, hero at the front, so this is perfect. While the air elemental if I switched him in like this, well, we only have air and you, so we, we could then do air damage to the frontliner. But he's got positive air, so it would need to be the area air attack, which is not a bad idea. And then you can combo it with the wolves, skeleton dogs, uh, air damage. That's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to go for the lead and physical damage at the front with combo with the satyr. I think that's the better ch uh, decision here. This means that the elemental weakness that we are applying in the first room with the trap is not that great at this point, right? So, I'm thinking that we might want to do something else. Because we're not, we are hardly doing any elemental damage in here, so it seems silly. The other thought that goes into this is that we want them to have some penalties applied that the satyr can push around. He comes in with fire resistance, which is important for the fire lady, and then nature's resistance also. So he's got positive resistance against the two area effect that we're going to be spammed with. The wind elemental would take more damage from the fire lady. Hmm. I am thinking about using Kumulus here to Spam the area attack. Hmm. What the fire damage? We have fire weakness across the board, by the way, with the two wolf skeletons. But then nature resistance is decent. Oh, not for the dog. Okay. But he applies enraged to the other guys, which is quite nice. He might die in the first round. I think he will. Yes, he does not get two actions. Ah, except the skeleton soldier might keep him alive just long enough. Okay. Low ice resistance on the frontliner here is bad for the monk. Oh, but we apply enhanced resistance again across the board. All the demons in the group start with uh, enhanced resistance. I keep forgetting that part. So this is actually a bad... I keep forgetting that with the satyr which makes him significantly worse here. I should, I, sh I really gotta get that under my skin. So maybe he's the wrong one. And then we would do the air elemental instead. It will apply more air weakness, which I'm not sure we can use that for anything, unfortunately. But then we could do front damage air with vulnerable, so he takes significantly more damage from the other two guys that we have. I think we get two rounds with all the creatures. Knock on wood. I think so. Ah, uh, maybe not the skeleton. Uh, the, the monk is slower than the skeleton, so maybe yes. Okay. And then we just blast him. We can choose the area attack or the frontal attack with the vulnerable. We, that's something to be considered. Alright, I think this is what I'm doing. Still with elemental weakness up here. I might want to switch that into the lure. I think I will. Here. Good. Then a trap. There. So then this trap is doubled and we can choose either the icy breeze. Ice is semi-good, but not against the frontliner. We will, no, we, we will already have dealt a ton of damage to him once this fight starts that we are about to initiate. Um, which is worth noting. We have fire. Fire is good except against the backliner. 
Oh, we don't really have full fire combo anymore. Oh, did I mess that up? I might have messed this up completely. Uh-oh, are we doing ice? Double ice application is kind of interesting because you don't, you, you, uh, like, the ice doesn't get worse the more stacks are applied, it just lasts for longer. And I don't do ice damage. Oh, I do do ice damage in the back here. Uh, I like that my master is what I'm trying to say. So that could be a thing. Or rallying horn seems to like it's just probably just better. Alright. Lots of extra damage. 60% extra damage in the first turn, then 50, and then on and on. It's probably 50 first because you lose one stack when your turn starts. Still good. Let me do the room here and it will make a decision. There's elemental weakness here, which is the usually one that we use, and I think it is gonna be the one here as well, yeah. So they come in with elemental weakness six, which again is just the amount of turns. Uh, but the fire guy here is gonna be doing a boatload of damage. I think we want a really high ice resistance on the front, obviously, because of him, and so this works out quite well, except he's got low nature resistance, but that's what we can't have everything. We'll have to deal with that. And so, the Succubus bus is not great here, but I'm gonna put in another, I'm gonna put in the, the Yeti. The Yeti throws ice boulders at the back, which we have a weak uh, against that, so that's kind of perfect. And then the Flame Eater does good fire damage across the board and will be doing more based on how many stacks of penalties are applied. Oh, which makes me want to switch this into a penalty applying machine instead. Probably the Icy Breeze, which makes sense with the other two guys. Though Rallying Horn across the board also works out quite well with him. Hmm. Well, they're not going to have that many penalties applied for the Flame Eater here once it gets to his turn, unless I do the Ice Trap. I wish I understood better. His passive says, damage still is increased 5% per stack of penalty applied to her. Per stack of penalty. Hmm. My question here is if I have, is it per, per full stack or is it per number on each stack as well? So if I have six turns of mental uh, mental weakness, is it then 30% or is it 5% for because we have a stack of elemental weakness? A penalty. It says per stack of penalty. So I'm guessing that that's like it's modified even by the number on the stacks. In which case, the, the Icy Breeze seems better. This will do 40% more to all of them from the two Ice Guys here. With double application of the Ice Weakness 4, we will also probably ma maintain the Ice Weakness into the Master, which means more Ice damage from her. Plus the Elemental Weakness from here. That one's a no-brainer though. And I think more damage from the Flame Eater, even though he would do even more with 60. It gets It's 40% more every turn for the two ice monsters and then let's see if if that's if my assumptions are correct then it's they get f eight stacks of ice penalty then they come in here then they have seven stacks of ice penalty then they come in here and then after, at, at, after acting once they will have six stacks of penalty which will mean 30 percent more yes so 30% more for him and 40% more for each of them, but with also with carryover for the master. Hmm. I'm talking myself out of it here. I think. I think the enrage might be better. 
for these guys here. And this guy can apply Ice Weakness himself, which works out quite well then. Okay. It'll be Double Rallying Horn. I have made up my mind, and this is still the setup we're going with. We could go with the Ice Skeleton as well, instead of the Flame Eater, but... Uh, he's significantly weaker than the other archetypes, and he will in fact only get one turn, where I think... The Flame Eater will get two turns, yes, because he's both fire resistant and nature resistant, which is what he will be blasted. I think we defeat them in the second room here, basically. And if not, we will defeat him, them with the Master, I'm sure. So... In the first room, I didn't even decide what I want in here, but it's probably not poison. Or it does physical damage, though. Hmm. But nature weakness here, and nature damage. Nature, nature, and nature is pretty high. Well, hmm, this does a good amount of damage. How does... Oh, because it's physical damage. Right, 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 right. And it then applies poison, which is useless for the most part. Against her, it's completely useless. He gets less stacks of it and has really high nature resistance. Nature weakness in here will not do anything for us, though. Except modify these few stacks here. So now the swarm of mosquitoes for the pure damage. This one applies slowed, but that's not really something we need. Okay, swarm of mosquitoes. And it does apply more poison to the two guys that already had it, which is quite nice. Except for he doesn't care, but he does. Alright, then... Oh, I didn't even think about what I wanted to cast in here. Alright. We have ice damage to the back with Titan 7, which is really good. Alright. Except she goes to Titan 6, Titan is 5, Titan is 4 when she starts her turn in here, so it's 40% less damage. Where Elemental Floor. But that will deal sort of the same amount of damage because Ice Weakness is. No, not, not at her lowest, but then the Freeze is definitely better. Poison Corpses is about nature damage and poison again, so that's bad. So it will be the, the Freeze. It will make. The Shaman here do less damage in the encounter that we are about to go into, which means more survivability for my monsters. This is kind of perfect. Alright. Then they regain morale here? Oh no! But imagine they had, got, had gotten healing here, they would probably have gotten to full health, right? So that sucks when that happens. Okay. There's no, it's a no-blowing brainer, we are definitely doing bleed on the front here. Then I'm either applying Vulnerable to the front, which I think is what's going to happen. Or we could... This one damages the backline, because it damages everyone who's slower than the Wind Elemental, so that is tempting. Or we could do uh, Air Weakness across the board. But I think applying Vulnerable to the frontliner makes sense, because we're going to be attacking at least one or two more times. I think two more times, yeah. Probably even three. So more damage to the front line. We might even be able to kill him in this turn with the uh, following damage from the bleeding is what I'm thinking. You can also do impalement with the leveled up skeleton soldier. So he deals damage equal to the same amount to the next guy in line. And since he is already armor weak, it kind of works out perfectly. But they both are. But I think we want to focus down on the front liner and just give him more bleed stacks. And it'll be give great value. Oh, oh, he just, okay, took him out. Oh, okay. Well, I did, didn't did do the math correctly here. Fair enough. Uh, mm -mm -mm. What then? We only get one more attack. I say we do the wind blade that bounces the damage to the backliner as well. Yeah. Decent damage. He also got a enhanced armor, which doesn't matter. And then he she healed the monk, of course. Right. Oh, I had forgotten about the heal. Yeah, and the rally horn goes twice. We might lose this at this point because I didn't calculate in the heal on him. Uh oh. And so yeah. So. 
here we are hoping for massive amounts of damage, but we're also taking it in the same amount. Uh-oh. This is doing good damage, though, and applies more of all the penalties. Then he removed the elemental weakness. I have thrown the run. Um, the ice weakness here won't matter because we won't get, be able to attack him with another ice attack. So let's just do the maximum damage that we can. And then we get an ice block on the back, which is quite nice. But not enough to kill her. Okay, we get more and more hit with the flame eater. So that does some nice damage. But they are all surviving into the master fight. And I think we are dead. It's gonna be a tight fit, if at all a, a chance of success here. I don't think it is though. Yeah, we can't. The thing is, I can't even kill the monk, right? He's never gonna die in this fight. Even if I kill the other guys, which is also gonna take a while. We're not dealing enough damage here. Okay. I uh, miscalculated this run. Like, I might be able to kill the backliner. We're healing off of that. And he. We have the lowest ice. Oh, sorry, fire weakness. So that would be the priority, I think. But we're not even gonna kill her. Damn! What a goof. I'm not sure if we could have won, but we definitely didn't. Alright, so just to demonstrate, since now we are in that situation, here's how you save scum for those that are interested in getting better at the game. This is how you would do it. Then it throws you into the beginning of uh, the same Dungeon? We're not gonna do that now. That is the... Oh, then I give up, of course, to be fair. Yeah. Alright, you're fired. Weeks 57, gold gathered, 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 5551 employees slaughtered, dungeons defended, blood and tears collected, heroes defeated, zero of them in morale. Now, score 42,000. I don't know if that's high or low. Well, we should gain a good amount of experience. Yeah. Alright. I really thought that we had this one in the back, so I'm a little bit surprised. But, oh well, we can go in and level the enchanters, which is always fun. Spend your XP. We get four talent points. This is what I showed at the start of the series. So... Frozen Rose applies Frostlight 3. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. That's one, one talent point just for that. Okay. Oh. Pick that up. Damage dealt by monsters to heroes affected by frostbite increased by 20% 10, and then 20%, which is a really, really good spike. Alright. Grants flamboyant lightning, a chain. A, so this is a chance to apply burn, and I'm not even using flamboyant lightning, so that seems silly. What do we get over here? This is the tree that starts buffing the enchanted seeds and monsters and forms. Uh, transformed by enchanted seeds again more life so uh, the next big step would be to get this whole tree built up to use the enchanted seeds damage dealt by monsters to heroes affected by poison increased by but I'm gonna do this since we are already we, I think we are already always granted the ice combo with this uh, with the enchanters so dealing more damage to he he uh, heroes affected by frostbite by 20%. It's pretty significant. And then I'm gonna start working on the Enchanted Seeds combo over here. Which I would want both of these trees fully leveled, or these talents here, before I even start using it, otherwise it feels insignificant. Treant attacks apply extra effect stacks. Okay. Makes Treants actually usable. The, the main th critique I have for this talent tree is that a lot of the things feel like you shouldn't use them at all, like the triads. I don't feel like I can use the triads until I get this thing, and then they might become good. I have the same thing with the enchanted seeds here. I want these before I even start using it, so on and so forth. But it's fine. It gives you a bit of leveling to do. Then go back. 
And so we will be doing at least one more run with the slaveholder, but that'll be for the next episode. So this was a shorter one, <laughs> but it's really good for showing uh, the, the roguelite element of the Legends of Keepers game, which is that it's pretty damn hard, and when when you misplan and forget about the opponent's uh, benefits and don't maximize your own stuff, then you die. I don't know if we could have done it differently, but it, it, the damage to the monk who already had the most HP was in the end probably what cost me the game because he's a really good tank and then they healed him to, to full. So then I, I thought I had him low and then, yeah, you saw it in effect. I don't have to explain it further. So this is the end of this playthrough. Hope everyone enjoyed the Enchantress and see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.